Hello again, everyone. I'm here with a review of another pen case. This is the Monteverde 36 pen case. And I purchased mine off of Amazon and it was very reasonably priced. I'll put a link down below. Um, but you can also get this at Goulet Pens and some other sites. Uh, those are the only two that I know for sure have them or had them as of the time of the filming this video. But I wanted to show you this particular pen case because it is rather inexpensive and I reviewed the Galen pen case on the channel and I'll put a link down that down below to those videos. I actually did an unboxing and then a review. I'll put both of those down below. Um, but I wanted to show you this one because it's less expensive than that and it really does hold a lot of pens and very securely and this particular case was recommended by Goulet Pens themselves uh, so that's why I got it in the first place to try it out and it turns out it really is a great case. So the case itself is so big that I cannot fit it on camera the other way around so you're gonna have part of the case outside of frame for some of the video. But uh, one thing to note is this is not a fancy leather case. This is more of a utilitarian case to keep your fountain pens safe. Um, both sides are pretty much the same, other than the crumbs from my table. <laughs> um, this side does not have the same little scallop edge there, and then on the back it has the Monteverde logo. And this is the front, and it zips up wonderfully that I have never had an issue with the zipper. The zipper works great. No catching or anything. Oops. It has this one uh, velvet, velvety covered fl uh, flap here and it just attaches at the top like so and it has never caused any issues with opening and closing the case like the Galen case did. Uh, basically what I'm using this case for is to hold my, oh, I want to say my less precious pens, but my <laughs> the pens that I don't um, feel are, I, are such a huge investment. Um, these are, for the most part, some of them are a little more expensive, but um, they are generally the less expensive pens, especially when we're talking about the Twisbees and the Lamy Safaris and that sort of thing. So um, I actually, I, I, so I have my Birmingham fountain pen that I just recently got and I was gonna put it in here and I wanted to rearrange things a little bit so that I could put it in here and I was trying to figure out how to arrange this because I do kind of want to put brands together. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the Lamy's over a little bit and sorry that some of this is out of frame, it's just because this case is so huge. I'm gonna put this Lamy back here. And actually this is another Lamy as well. I might put this here just so that all the Lamy's are together. And then I will move, I'll move this. Let's see, I'll move that. I kind of wanted to go with the with the color theme too. I'm I'm just a nut. I I kind of like organizing things by color. I um, at one point organized all of our books by color on our bookshelf, and of course we don't have as many books now. We we got rid of a lot of them, but uh, <laughs> that was a big undertaking at the time. And uh, but I really liked the result. It was very nice. It was very nice looking. But anyway, I try to do the same thing with my pens. So my idea is to put this one here so that it's kind of in between the other bluish pens so that those are all together. And I wonder, mm, no, I'm gonna put that here, leave it here. I will show you each of these rows here in a minute once I've got this in shape here. So it goes over one more and then I will put this here. And it's also to show you how well it holds such a wide variety of size of pens. Because that particular one is rather large. Okay, I'm going to make sure that this is out of the way a little bit so I can move it up. 
So as usual, um, I may end up having to get either another one of these cases or a Galen case, because I actually have some super cheapy fountain pens in, an, in yet another case, which I will show you at a different time. That is um, sort of a, a cheapy case that's not this uh, that I got off of Amazon that actually works pretty well for fountain pens. So that's, that's another video for another day. But I did want to go through what's in this case, and I'll go through the easy side first. So this, this has a whole bunch of Twisbees up here at the top. These are all Twisby 580s, Diamond 580s, uh, this one being my Custom Grind Architect Medium Nib. And this is the Twisby Vac, which I still have not filled as of this time. I've tested it, but I have not filled it. And then I have three Twisby uh, Diamond Minis. And then down here, I have two of the Twisby Ecos. This one's actually an Eco T. And then these are all Lamis. This is, oh, I forget what this model's called. Um, doesn't say on the side. But anyway, if I if I find the model of this Twisby, I will put it down below. Uh, I'm sorry, not Twisby, Lamy. Um, it's actually quite a nice pen, and it always stays wet. Um, unlike some of my other Lamys, this particular one um, does stay wet. You know, I could open it months later, and it would still be fine. I think the cap has a better sealing mechanism than the Safaris do. So these four are various Safaris. Uh, and then this one is, oh goodness, now I've forgotten this one too, but I will put a link down below to this particular model, but this is in the terracotta color, this particular Twisby. So Twisbees, I'm sorry, Lamy, oh my goodness, sorry about that. <laughs> so these are Lamy's and these are all Twisbees. Okay, just so we're straight on that. But I will put the models of these two Lamy's down below when I find that out. So then over here, and I will just lift that up like that so you can see, I have sort of a hodgepodge here. Um, so I have my, um, this is Ondoro by Faber-Castell. This is a vintage um, Schaefer Targa. This is a vintage Waterman, but I don't know what the model is. I don't think I ever found that out because I bought it secondhand and it wasn't in any of the packaging. I mean, it was in its box, but it didn't say the model. This is a Kaweco uh, in the brass. And then this, is, uh, the Kaweco Sport in brass. And then this is a Traveler's Company pen. This is a Kaweco uh, Lilliput. This is a, an Esterbrook vintage pen. Um, and again, I don't know the model, but it does have a little lever fill system. It's actually quite a nice pen. This is my sketch pen that I purchased from, um, from Jerry's Artorama. It's Golden Writ, I believe is the name. And then down here, I have a Narwhal fountain pen. I have a Pen BBS, and I have the new Birmingham Ham Pen Company pen, which you can see, even though it's larger than most, if not all, of the pens in here, it still fits really well. There's only one uh, fairly thin loop for each pen, but I have found that it is not a problem. It holds it very tightly and very well. This is a Franklin Kristoff. Uh, I think this is the 45L. Again, I bought that secondhand, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's the model number. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Mini. I was going to sort of align those a little bit. These two are both Sailor 1911 Juniors. And then this is a Pilot, I believe it's the 78G, which is a vintage pen as well that I got from Peyton Street Pens. So that's all that I have in here. And like I said, I have my sort of let's say fancier pens um, or more traditional pens in my uh, in my Galen leather pouch, the 10, 10 pen case. And so far, I still have enough room for everything I have. 
but I do actually have a couple of fountain pens coming. So, and there's only two spaces in here. And I'm wondering, I, I may move some of these into that sort of cheaper case I was telling you about. I don't really want to go too much into that today because then I would have to explain what it is and all of that. But um, I will cover that in another video. And at that point, I may have moved some of these into that other case just because um, my collection is growing. I have decided to sort of pare down some of my fountain pens as well. There are some that just don't work in my really dry environment here in Colorado. Um, one being uh, the rollerball pens that I have. I have a couple of rollerballs by a couple of different uh, brands that are essentially fountain pens with a rollerball uh, nib. They just won't stay wet here. And I'm sure they work fine if you're somewhere else in the country where it's more damp or humid a lot of the time, but it, they just don't work here. So I'm going to get rid of those. Um, I have some noodlers pens. I have some of the old <laughs> stinky noodlers pens. The, the material that they make the pens out of just has a really sort of um, rotten milk smell, which is really not pleasant. Um, and I'm not that crazy about them either. So I think I'm just gonna kinda, I'll probably just give those away if someone actually wants them. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out where and how to sell the pens. I'm thinking, um, oh, and I have a, a Lamy in, um, uh, it's one of the, it's a pink special edition. It's not the Safari, it's the, uh, whatever the next level up from the Safari, uh, the, uh, the metal one, um, but it's in pink, and I just, the pen actually writes really well. It actually writes better than my Safaris, but I'm just not a fan of the color. So um, so I was planning on get, getting rid of that, and that's just some examples, but I'm trying to figure out whether I should just give them away to people I know, or, um, or if I should sell them. I mean, they're all perfectly fine as far as functional. They function fine but um, I just don't know the right way to go about that. I know that there's a buy sell trade group on Facebook. I might sell them there or, you know, maybe give them away with just like free shipping or something like that. So, or uh, just pay for shipping, I mean, and give them away for free. We'll see, I haven't decided yet. So, um, so that's this case, but it works great. Um, the fountain pens have never gotten scratched in here. They, they hold them really, really well. Uh, you, you'll just get this little bit of indenting from the pens on the other side, but this little divider seems to hold them really well. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, but because there is this separation, it's not really an issue. And part of the advantage of not having it go all the way to the bottom is that zipping it is a breeze and it works great. Never had an issue. And it doesn't feel super tight. It doesn't feel like, it feels like there's just the right amount of space inside to hold these pens. Um, here, I'll show you the side. That's the top, that's the side, that's the bottom. They, for the most part, this may be a little looser on the bottom, but it's definitely not wavy or um, like it's being um, stressed in any way up there. So that was probably longer than I wanted to spend on this pen case, but I did want to show it to you. So there you go. <laughs> all right, I'll put a link to this case below and all the prior videos of fountain pen cases below as well. And that's it for today. So I will see you next time. Feel free to like and or subscribe and have a great day. Thanks, bye.